Well, welcome back to We Are Nacogdoches. It's the show where we get to talk to the people that are doing good things in our town and hear more about the businesses, the organizations, and the fun things going on in Nacogdoches. I'm Kelly Augustine. I work at the Nacogdoches County Chamber of Commerce, and I'm so happy today to have a very special guest with me. It's Jason Rena. He is a business owner, East Tex Photography, correct? That's right. And I know you offer a lot of variety of different photography services for okay. businesses, for individuals. Um, in fact, it's kind of the way that you got into drone photography or videography that interested me and wanted to have you on the show today because I feel like there are more folks in Nacogdoches that might be interested in getting into flying drones or using drones and just need a little bit of instruction so that they know they're on the right track. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> so let's start with the basics and clarification. What is a drone? Well, today a drone uh, most commonly is what's known as a quadcopter. It's, um, it's a, a flying remote controlled um, aircraft and uh, they call it a quadcopter because it's got four rotors and those rotors turn um, in different directions, keep it flying, and most of the time, almost always, they're going to have some sort of onboard camera that is capable of taking uh, high resolution photos and, and video. Neat. And I assume that there's probably going to be, like with most things, a range from <laughs> quality, price, what they can do, what they can offer. Could you give us a little more on that? You know, I, I kind of I kind of liken it to going fishing. You can go out and you can catch a fish with a stick and some line and a hook, or you can go out and buy yourself a $200,000 bass boat and everything that goes along with it. At the end of the day, you're still just catching fish. So yes, drones do range in price um, pretty substantially. You can go to Walmart and buy a drone for under $100. Um, you can go out and, and buy a cinema level drone for ten thousand dollars and then throw on another you know ten thousand dollar camera um, but most of them fall somewhere in the middle um, for a really high quality entry-level drone you're looking at between five and six hundred dollars um, for one that um, like the one that i use um, that's the dji mavic 3 and um, you're looking at an entry price of about fifteen hundred dollars or so but that's going to be something that's used primarily for folks that are doing it uh, for a living like myself Gotcha. Well, how long have you been using drones? <laughs> so I believe now, if I'm not mistaken, it's my fourth year. Um, I got into it about four years ago. Um, it, it's kind of a funny story how I got into it. My father-in-law and I were sitting around one afternoon on a Sunday after lunch, and he just kind of brought up out of the blue, Jason, you ever considered flying a drone, adding that to your business? I said, oh, not really. I don't, I don't think there's that big of a need around here. And uh, by the time uh, I went to bed that night, I had researched and purchased my, my first drone. <laughs> and sure enough, uh, there, there was a need and, and there was a demand for it here. And so that's kind of how I got started. I, I remind him every once in a while how appreciative I am for him bringing that up. Sometimes it's not bad to listen to those father-in-laws. Exactly, yep. Right? Well, uh, I know that you work with a lot of our local businesses. Um, I assume this is giving them different perspective uh, for their marketing, you Correct. know. But you also have gotten involved in some really cool projects that kind of help the community or uh, different organizations. What? Give us some examples. Well, I've I've done a lot of work for the university. Um, I did a lot of uh, I took a lot of photos during what, what we call Snowmageddon. Mm -hmm. uh, that are very unique in that, you know, it's pretty rare to find the campus of uh, Stephen F. Austin covered in snow. So those images were pretty neat. Um, I've, of course, done some, some work with you guys with the Blueberry Festival, which I love doing. Um, one of the first big uh, projects that I did was actually for ABC's show 2020. They did a show um, about um, an ex-SFA football player and they needed some B-roll from uh, from a drone perspective and so I got to be on national television with that um, also during the the snowstorm I did uh, a couple of days work with Encore and got to follow their line crews around as they were making repairs to the, the damaged lines 
Um, and there's others. Um, I've, I've been extremely fortunate. Uh, right now I'm doing work with Drew Reconstruction, um, countless other folks. And again, mm -hmm. I feel very fortunate and privileged to work with some businesses here that um, without having a drone and, and being a commercial drone pilot, I wouldn't have been able to get. Well, I just want to mention a brag okay. uh, that came from Textot because That's uh, another big one. what was it about three years ago they started the large construction project on the south side of town i think it was four four but, years ago yeah. and uh, the community of course was very curious uh you know right. about what's going Myself on Self included <laughs> so i heard it straight from a dot employee how appreciative they were when you approached them and said hey i'd just like to do this can i do a drone flyover well, you tell the story. Okay. How did it happen? Well, it started out, like you said, um, we were all kind of curious about the flyover project. It was all happening behind the hotels and, and the, the, the wooded area on South Street. And we really had no idea what was going on back there. You know, we didn't know what all they were doing. We saw the beginning, we saw the end, but in the middle is what everybody else wanted to know. Um, so yeah, I took my drone and um, I, I videoed the, the, the progress that they were making along the new route that the flyover um, will, will take. And um, I recorded the path that I flew um, on, on, my, on my system. And that way I'm able to take uh, next time and, and fly the drone on the exact same path. So that said, um, about every six to eight weeks now, I'll fly that exact same path and provide an update to everyone. I do it at, at no charge because I look at it as kind of a community service just so everybody knows where things are at. I'm glad that TechStot's using it. I had a chance to speak with them the other night and they, they told me in person how much they, uh, they liked it. Apparently I'm famous in TechStot circles. Um, but I, again, I, I, that's one of those things. Um, I, I can't do everything for free, but I enjoy doing that and providing that feedback for the community. And um, it, it's been great visibility as well. Well, I'll echo the thank you on that. You're too, more than welcome. Because there's no other way we could see the progress of that project. Well, you could drive it, but you might get in trouble for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, speaking of asking permission and how you work with the festival, uh, the Expo Center, I've seen you do work, mm -hmm. work in their events as well. What's the advice you give so someone doesn't get in trouble with their drone? Right. So... The FAA regulates all drone operations. At the end of the day, the drone is, um, for example, the one I have here in front of me, um, there's a, a number on the side of that. And essentially what that is, that's the same as a tail number on an aircraft. So my drone is a federally registered aircraft. Every drone that is above a certain weight has to be registered with the FAA. That is probably the, the one thing that would get people in trouble the most is not being registered. Um, the second thing is if you ever do anything with your drone for money, so if anyone pays you or you have a video that you monetize on YouTube, you are required by law by the FAA to have a commercial drone operator license. And that's the, the part 107 rules that we have to follow. Um, the best resource for someone who's wanting to buy a drone and make sure that they do everything legally and, and by the book is to just go to the FAA's website. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it's FAADroneZone.com. They can go there and learn about what's required for both a uh, commercial, uh, commercial license and for a recreational pilot license. Both of them um, are going to provide the basics. For example, you can't fly above 400 feet. You can't fly over people and that sort of thing. And educate yourself. If you want to buy a drone, make sure that you know what you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do. I was going to ask on that restriction for the height. I mean, I, I don't know, 20 feet from 400 feet. Is there a little buzzer or beeper or something on the drone itself? Yeah, absolutely. So anytime that um, you, you approach the 400 foot level, um, it's either going to stop you or, for example, on mine, there are times where I do go above 400 feet. There are um, ways you can do that. You can be 400 feet above a structure, for example, above a transmission tower. So I leave mine um, set to higher than 400, but by default, it is limited to 400 feet and it won't let you go any higher. Okay, well, I'm going to ask you to 
<clears throat> grab that crystal ball. Okay. Um, where do you think this technology is going? Or where are some new ways it could be used? Have you thought about that? You know, I have. Um, I think that the technology involved with drones um, is going to continue in, continue to improve, number one, in the camera technology. Um, as all cameras evolve and increase in quality, um, sensor size, megapixels, you know, and all that, uh, we'll see that also in drones. The stabilization on drones now is, is so spot on, I'm not sure that there could be a whole lot more improvement to that. Um, what I do see is that there's a possibility that um, the collision avoidance to make sure that you don't crash into a building, that, that is also going to improve. So well, That would um, be helpful. As it stands right now, though, drones are extremely um, high quality, and it's hard to imagine what, what else they could do. Well, I look forward to seeing what you're going to be doing. Thank you. <laughs> so if someone wanted to talk to you a little bit more about all this or, or how you built your business even, how could they get in touch with you? I absolutely love talking to folks about it. In fact, I'm, I'm passionate about it. I could sit here and talk to you about it all day long. Um, but contact me. You can go to my website. It has all my contact information. It's easttextphotography.com. And um, shoot me an email, call me, text me. I uh, would be, be more than happy and love to talk to you. Great. Well, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Kelly. And we're so glad you were able to join us today on We Are Nacogdoches, the show where we really can explore our town. This program is brought to you by the Department of Mass Communication at Stephen F. Austin State University in association with the Nacogdoches County Chamber of Commerce and with special thanks to the City of Nacogdoches.